Good morning, once again, hallelujah, and happy first Sunday, happy new year to all of us, amen, hallelujah. You know, God is an amazing God. You know, friends, one of the things that God has, has brought us through in 2020 is that he has shown us that despite of what's going on all over the world, he remains to be faithful, amen. And this morning, as an opener message for the entire year, I'm going to share this message entitled, Rejoicing for a New Year. Rejoicing for a New Year. Are you excited with me? Amen. Hallelujah. So, friends, one of the amazing things is in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse number 4, the Bible tells us, Rejoice in the Lord always. Can you say amen to that? And I will say it again, rejoice. Now that is a big command. Amen? Despite of what is going on everywhere, despite of what we may have been through just in the past few weeks, I personally can definitely say I am a rejoicing soul. Amen? Because God is a good God. And as God's people, we have been commanded in Philippians chapter 4 to rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice always. We are a people of celebrations. Do you believe that, friends? Amen? Do you know that we love to celebrate? Uh, for most of us, especially um, those of us who, who have come from distant lands and distant shores, or, or even if you grew up here and born here in the United States, an amazing thing that we have seen is that we love to celebrate. We love to celebrate life. We love to sing. We love to party, we love to eat, we love to cook, we love to be with others. Why? Because it is a great thing to celebrate. Now, let me just bring that a little bit further. How much more when we become a Christian? Amen? How much more when we become a child of the Most High God and the, 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 the heart that wants to rejoice the heart that just wants to celebrate God and His faithfulness. Brand new year. Still, we have problems all over the world. Some of them have not gone away. But one thing we can say, we can follow this command of God in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. To rejoice in the Lord always. And again, rejoice. And I say it again, rejoice. Now, one of the aspects of biblical study, um, just to mention this, is that w when you read or study passages of Scripture over and over again, when you start studying Scripture, if there is something that is repeated more than once, you got to pay attention to it. Meaning to say, there is a message there. Amen? And this is a good example in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I say it again, rejoice. Amen? So, in preparation for this message, um, one, one of the uh, uh, ladies from the worship team texted me and said, Pastor, what is your message? And my message will be on rejoicing for a brand new year. And the whole point of this message is to mention when should we be rejoicing? And she just texted me right away and said, Pastor, is the answer always? <laughs> And I said, wow, you got it in one word, something I'm going to share in 45 minutes. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. When do we rejoice? Always. Hallelujah. So, the first thing that I'm going to mention this morning is this, friends. When do we rejoice? Number one, on special occasions. Can you say amen to that? In the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament, they always had feasts to celebrate special occasions. They had different festivals and different things that they did to celebrate different times of the year. Today, on special occasions, we celebrate different things. Can you say amen to that? Look at this passage in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Amen? Rejoice with those who rejoice, and of course, we also mourn with those who mourn. Now, do you know someone who is rejoicing? Rejoice with them. Hallelujah. 
How do we rejoice? We are very good at this. We rejoice when there are anniversaries that take place. <laughs> Can you say amen? When there is a birth of a child, that's one of the most amazing things that someone could ever experience. Amen? Marriage is something that we rejoice. We, we love to celebrate marriages. Birthdays, we celebrate life and life abundant. Victories that we have. Graduations, we celebrate special occasions. Even vacations and holidays. We celebrate them. Now, I don't know about you, but I have received so many happy New Year's just a few days back. Could you say you have also received those? You know, those are words of blessing. We celebrate special occasion. We say, Happy New Year. Why? Because... We celebrate the newness of a, new, of a new year. We don't say bad new year. We say happy new year. Merry Christmas. I had so many greetings. Merry Christmases. Why? Because we say Merry Christmas. We want to be merry and glad. We want to bring cheer to the world. So when there are special occasions, this is what we do as a church. We rejoice. Amen? Now, what, what's amazing about this, friends, is that the Bible tells us in this passage, in uh, Romans 12, verse 15, to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. There's a time for everything. There's a time for rejoicing with others, and there's also a time to mourn and feel and go through the process of grief. But friends, it doesn't change the fact that Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, reminds us to rejoice in the Lord always. Can you say amen to that? Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen? Hallelujah. The second thing, friends, not only on special occasions do we rejoice, amen, but we can also rejoice during unhappy situations. Can you say amen to that? No. It's easy to rejoice when there's a happy moment, a special occasion. It's easy to rejoice in those moments. But what happens during an unhappy situation? What do you do? What do you How can you rejoice in those difficult times of your life? Now, Look at this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Meaning to say, in special occasions, in good times, we rejoice. How about during unhappy situations? Now this is very difficult for us to do. Because when there is an unhappy situation... We feel sad. But we know that someone who is in the inside of us gives us peace that is beyond what is going on on the outside. Can you say amen to that, friends? You know, this is the amazing thing about the life that we have in Jesus. Wherein greater is He that is in us, than he who is in the world and the circumstances that are going on in the world. One of the most difficult times in my own life was when my dad passed away. The pastor at the church said, Chris, is it okay for you to preach on Sunday? <laughs> and I said, you know, uh, it's a time of grief. And he said, no, pastor, we would love for you to preach. So I said, okay, I will try. So Sunday came along. I preached a sermon on the day, on, on, on one of the days where my dad had his coffin there in the front of the church. I felt peace. 
I know it was sad. But I knew where he is, where he was at that time. And I knew where I stood at that time. And let me say this, friends. That everyone who was there that Sunday morning was blessed. Because why? We can make unhappy situations for the good. Can you say amen? We rejoice because of life that God has given us in unhappy situations. Can you say amen? One of the things, friends, is this. A lot of Christians are hostaged by happy moments. What this means, friends, is a lot of Christians cannot function and they just look forward and they are hostaged by happy moments. As soon as an unpleasant situation comes, they're not grateful anymore. They are unable to rejoice. They lost the beat in their heart. I want to challenge us, friends, because you know what? Anything that happens outside of us cannot affect the Jesus that is in us. Amen? So as a Christian, don't be hostaged by happy moments. Don't say that I'm only, I'm only blessed when I'm happy. What did Apostle Paul say? I've learned to be content in every and all circumstances. Good times. Bad times. How can we relate this in our times today, friends? We're starting a brand new year. First Sunday of 2021. Right now, this day. Yet, there's so many things going on outside. So many things happening all over the world. But remember this. That Jesus who is in us. No matter what happens. No matter what's going on. Is greater. Than he that is in this world. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Not only that, the Bible tells us a lot of things about the life that we have in Christ to carry our cross. How do you carry your cross? It's following Christ. The life that we used to live, we don't live anymore. We live for Jesus Himself. Can you say amen? Now, let me say about the context of Philippians chapter 4 or the context of the entire book of Philippians. You know, during the time that Paul wrote this, he was 1,430 miles away from Jerusalem. In fact, he is in a completely different continent at this time. He was imprisoned in Rome. Hello? From Jerusalem, this great par excellence, top caliber missionary, the Apostle Paul, he was 1,430 miles away. This is in a straight line. Now in travel, because this was in boat, he experienced shipwreck. In the island called Malta, he experienced a snake bite on the way there. He stayed in Caesarea, part of Israel. We've been there in that coastline. Uh, but then this boat traveled all the way to Malta. He got shipwrecked there, stayed for a few years, then continued on his journey unto Rome and stayed another few more years before finally he was executed. During that time, distant from home, he wrote a letter about rejoicing. Are you with me? So no matter where you're at, how far you're at, how distant you are, how isolated you are from friends and family, you can still have the joy of the Lord which is your strength. If Apostle Paul, who was so far away in a completely different continent from where he ministered ground zero Jerusalem, Yet he had the love and the peace in his heart to bless another church. That was okay. Just hold on one minute. The next map. He 
was blessed to write this letter from Rome to the church in Philippi, which was 630 miles away from Rome. My point about this, friends, is this. Paul, who was imprisoned already, not only in Caesarea, but shipwrecked in Malta and lived in Malta for a few years, then eventually traveled to Rome under arrest. This is not in his own free will. Yet when he got to Rome, spent his days in prison writing letters. And the most phenomenal of this is in Philippians, the, the book of Philippians, which is sent to the church in Philippi, which is in Macedonia, which is, only, which is 613 miles away. Straight line to travel would be different. And he tells them about rejoicing in the Lord. A man who is in prison, a man who is isolated, a man who is by himself, yet still talks about joy in Christ. Can you say amen? He still talks about rejoicing in the Lord and repeats it again and says, and again I say rejoice. Let me ask you this. Can you rejoice in difficult problems? Can you rejoice this new year? Can you make rejoicing as a first fruit offering that would redeem the remainder of this year? Hello? Can you do that? Paul says to do this always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen? What differentiates us from those who are apart from Christ is the fact that unbelievers, when it is an unhappy situation, they become sad. Hello? Isn't that true? But, but when it is a happy situation, the unbelievers are also happy. What differentiates us as believers is this. Whether it's a bad situation or a happy situation, we can rejoice. Amen? We can be thankful. We can say thank you, Jesus, despite of what is happening all around us. Now, I want to share a personal testimony this past two weeks. This is my own personal experience. Uh, I went and had myself tested for COVID. And somehow, I came back positive. That was uh, early part of December. What, what's the, the thing, friends, is this. When you get this very bad news, what happens in your heart is your heart begins to sink. But the amazing thing, from the ride from the clinic to the house, my heart was down. When I got to the parking lot, I prayed to the Lord uh, to, uh, in my driveway, and I asked God, Lord, this is not a good situation. But what can I do? I just have to choose to rejoice. I'm going to go in my room and I'm going to treat this situation as a time of rejoicing. I was quarantined for two straight weeks. Strict quarantine. Beyond, it, it was actually beyond the days that was required because from the time of exposure, uh, I, I you know, it, it was already beyond 14 days. But I quarantined for 14 days. The blessing about this, friends, is this. My wife, <laughs> my soulmate, would bring food for me in my little nice hotel room. She would drop it off at the door. And then she would leave and I would open the door. And wow, breakfast in bed every morning. Lunch in bed at noon. And another lunch, another dinner every day. And there were snacks in between with fruits. What can I say but rejoice? What can I say? Be thankful. Now I do understand because I've been through this already. I do understand that this, this is not a, a joke. That there are people out there who are dealing with a lot more. And it's a struggle out there. 
But I'm just sharing my own personal experience. And all I can say is I can rejoice despite of what has taken place. I can be thankful to the Lord. And friends, I just want to let you know, and, and I have shared this already, but I just want to let you know that I also, at the end, tested negative. Amen? So, I am safe, I guess. <laughs> but one thing I do know is this. I love God. And I know you love God. And we are here because we all love God. We are here because we have a God who is faithful. He is a God that we can celebrate with. He never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. If Paul traveled all these miles and still have the peace of Christ, you can in your situation right now. You can celebrate and rejoice God's goodness despite of what you are dealing with and going through. Amen? Two perspectives. You can look at the glass half full or you can look at the glass half empty. Some people are happy because yay, the glass is half full. But then you also have others who feel sad because the glass is half empty. Rejoice for what you have. Amen? And this is Apostle Paul's command to us. To rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, friends, what we think and how we make out a situation is a decision that we, we have in our minds. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when you are discouraged, you can actually overcome that? Amen? Amen. Do you believe that when you are down, you can actually rejoice? Hello? Why? Because it's a decision in, in us. We can either dwell in the problem or be free from it. Amen? Now, my wife has heard me multiple times during quarantine. I would take a shower and I will just shout and praise God. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's how I am when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I can be really loud thanking God because God is faithful. God is good. God is good. Can you say amen to that? We can determine with our mind. We always say this. It's the battle of the mind. It's a time that we put that into action. Amen. Amen. Do not let the circumstances of this world dictate your future and your victories. Let God determine it. For Apostle Paul, his mind philosophy in life is this. To live is Christ. To die is gain. What can you do with someone who is alive? If he's living, he'll live for Christ. If he's dead, it's even better. What can you do? How can you do or treat someone like that whose life is completely devoted and trusting in God. The attitude of the mind. In the book of Romans, the first 11 chapters of the entire book of Romans is a study about theology and doctrine of salvation. Romans chapter 1 all the way to Romans chapter 11 tells us how we are saved and what salvation is and, and what God has done in the area of grace, law, and works. Then in Romans chapter 12, now we start with a practical. Apostle Paul basically tells us, you've learned theology, now this is it. He says in verse number 2 of Romans 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world. You know why? Because this world will conform you to its pattern. Hello? It will try to put you in its mold. It will teach you how to, to, to live in the worldly standard. If you don't have Christ, it will teach you how to become drunk. Without Christ, it will teach you how to, to gossip. Without Christ, this world will teach you to lie. It's just there. You, 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 you become just like the world. But the Bible says in verse 2, do not conform to this pattern. If Romans 1 
to 11 tells us about theology. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 tells us about the practicality of this life. What does it tell us? So you are saved? Don't conform yourself to this pattern of the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can you say amen to that? You know what, friends? Let the mind be renewed. Let's rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Don't let the problems of this world. Now, I'm not saying that we, 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 we what, what is known as metaphysics. Metaphysics is, if you believe it's not there, it will not be there. No, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is the problems are there. But remember who overcame the world. In this world, you will have troubles. Jesus even acknowledged that. It was Jesus himself who said to us that in this world, you will have trouble. But he gives us a promise. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Hallelujah. Then you will be able to test, approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The renewed mind is able to make decisions that are godly and God's will. Can you say amen? The renewed mind will tell you, don't go in this place because this place is not the right place for you to go. The renewed mind will tell you, don't buy this because this is not something that is good for you. The renewed mind will tell you, don't mingle with this kind of friends because this kind of friends will lead you astray. Because what does righteousness have with darkness? Amen? So we are to not allow the pattern of this world to direct us. Next, friends, let's look at this. When do we rejoice? Number three, we rejoice in our weaknesses. Now this is difficult. <laughs> how can we rejoice in our weakness? Apostle Paul tells us how it is done. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Can you say that where you're at right now? My grace is sufficient for you. Can we say it one more time? My grace is sufficient for you. Can we say it the third time? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power, whose power? Not your power. Whose power? God's power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. What does this passage have to do with when do we rejoice? We can rejoice, friends, when we humble ourselves in the midst of our weakness, in the midst of the problems that are out there, and say, Lord, you know, I've been trying my best, but my best is never good enough. I need your grace. His power is made perfect in your weakness. Now, Apostle Paul was saying this in the midst of a physical infirmity that he's been dealing with. It is known as the thorn in the flesh. Apostle Paul prayed for three times that this thing will go away, but it did not. But we find Apostle Paul rejoicing and understanding that when there are things that you could not change, when there are things that you have no control over, give it to God. Let God take control of it. Trust in Him. Trust in His wisdom. Trust in His mysteries. And He will see you through every single time. And this is a philosophy that Paul understood. That when I am weak, that is when He is perfectly strong. When I go through moments that I give up and I humble myself and I turn to God instead of trying my best, he is there. Hallelujah. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now, friends, 
this is important. Because we can give ourselves to God. Amen? So, look at this. On special occasions, we can be rejoicing. That's easy to do. Special occasions. Graduation of a son or a daughter from college. That's easy to do. We can celebrate and rejoice. But how about rejoicing in our weakness? Now remember, when Paul was saying this, he, he was talking about his physical infirmity. That there is no thing, there is nothing in this world that can affect us in him. Amen? The Bible says, what can separate us from the love of God? Death? Sickness? What is it? What's there? <laughs> what can... Paul says, when I am weak... That is when I am strong. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, the, the, the psalmist in the book of Psalms says, Hallelujah. Let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, Oh, I just heard a little bit. Those of you online, can you just shout it out? Let the weak say, Let the poor say, because of what the Lord has done, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Can you imagine if everything we do happens every time there is something that is needed comes to pass? Who eventually gets the glory? What happens if there are no problems and everyone who comes to us finds an answer? Later on, it will be the glory of man that will be accredited instead of the glory of God. That's why the Bible tells us, in order for me not to be conceited, that was the very reason for what he was doing. Now, friends, this is hard theology. This is hard things to grasp. There are things we don't understand that are there, and we, it's just there. But one thing we do know is that in weakness, His power is made perfect. God's power is made perfect in those times. Our society today tells us that we must always be happy. And... There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, let's do it. But there are also times that we can rejoice in unhappy situations. And even in our own weaknesses. Look at this passage, friends. In Psalms 34, verse 17 and 18. Then the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. Can you say amen? When we cry out, when we're dealing with stuff, when we're dealing with problems, we can cry out. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Can you say amen? amen? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. We go through problems. We go through difficulties. We cry out to God. That's the promise of God. What does he say? And the Lord hears them. When we say, Lord, I give up. I give this to you, Lord. You know what? That's the prayer that God desires. The Lord is close to those who are brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God desires to strengthen us when we give Him everything. When we don't say, I did it my way. When we say, Lord, do it your way. We submit it to Him. We give it to Him. Hallelujah. You know, friends, the Bible tells us also to take up our cross and follow Him. Now, let me say this because this is important to be said. This, the statement that follows right now, it is this. Don't make unnecessary crosses just so that you will have something to bear. Amen? What that means is 
this passage that talks about carrying your cross is not something that you do intentionally. It's the trials and the problems that come as you follow Christ, you carry that cross, God will see you through. God will guide you through the promise. Remember, sometimes in times of weakness, that loneliness helps us remember the faithfulness of God. Sometimes those lonely situations, those weaknesses that we encounter, things that we could not change, allows us to remember our God is there and He is faithful. I know, friends, each one of us here has a testimony that we can say. Each one of us here has a life experience that we can remember and we can say, Lord, despite of what I've gone through, I see myself a better person going through that. Because God never allows us to go through something that we could not carry through. Amen? Now the last one, friends, is this. Rejoice in neutral situations. Amen? What is a neutral situation? A neutral situation is when there is no special occasions, there is no unhappy situations, you're not dealing with weakness. It's just going through the routine of life. Maybe we could say it and call it boredom. When things are the same day after day, we can rejoice. Can you say amen to that? Maybe some of us are going through this. Maybe through this pandemic, uh, things have changed. Maybe uh, a work environment has changed. Maybe now you have to, to stay home for a prolonged period of time. Different things could happen. Maybe, uh, you know, whatever it is that causes your situation to become the same every day. No unhappy situations, no special occasions, nothing wrong is going on, but it's just the grind today is the same as yesterday, the same as tomorrow, and you're wondering and asking, what? Can I still rejoice in that? Yes, because we are to rejoice always. Amen. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 28, whatever you do, work on it with all your heart. Can you say amen? Work on it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. This is important, friends. Now, look at this in th that same verse in Col Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, whether it's ministry, <laughs> whether you are a teacher, whether you are a medical professional, whatever you do, work on it with all your heart. Can you say amen? Why? Because the standard of work is not working for human masters. The standard of work is not your employer. The standard of work is this, as working for the Lord. Can you say amen? When you go to school, when you're studying and getting a degree, when you're working in, 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 a, in an environment that you are in, work as unto the Lord. So friends, if you're on time at work, be on time at church. I didn't hear a single amen. <laughs> amen. If you can come early, for work, come early for church. If you can give an extra at work, give an extra for God. In fact, the standard of work is unto the Lord. The way you minister unto God and work for the Lord is the standard of how you operate in your workplace. Colossians 3 verse 23. You say, Pastor, what does this mean? When you go through those routine of grinding day after day, the same thing, same problem, same situation, same circumstance, let me say this, do it unto the Lord. Rejoice. Be excited. Be 
because you know what? You're not doing it for human masters. You're not doing it for an income or for a paycheck. You're doing it for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the rewarder of you. Amen? That's the, the blessing of being a believer. We have a master that is higher than any earthly master. Some people work for a living. Some people work for the Lord. And that is not only a ministry thing. That is every single area of work that we do. It is work unto the Lord. Amen? Can you agree with me on that, friends? Amen. Hallelujah. Work unto the Lord. There are times when people make the worst mistakes in the neutral situations of life. They think everything is okay because nothing is happening. Have you heard of the, the, the story? It's not a real story about <laughs> the, the monkey who was uh, climbing the tree. I'm just going to share it, okay? There was a monkey who climbed the tree and there was no wind. So the monkey held on very tight because there is nothing that is there to remind him of the dangers. The next day, it was a stormy day. There was so much wind. So the monkey held on as the tree was being swerved back and forth. But unfortunately, for the next five days, there was just a slight wind. And the monkey was up in the tree. Day one, day two, he was okay. But on day three, he could feel the wind on his hair. Day five, day six was the same. On day seven, because everything was a neutral situation, he fell from the tree. He fell asleep. The moral of the story is this. Sometimes, when there are problems, we know who to turn to. Right? Sometimes, when there are no problems, we know who to thank for. But in neutral situations, when you're just going through the daily boredom of life, that is a very dangerous place to be in. If we are not going to acknowledge God in everything that we do. Why? That's when sin takes place. That's when those little small things creep in. That's when someone says, I've done this before, I will be okay this time. That is when uh, um, Samson, who had confidence that he got away in the other time, said, this will not be, this. This will not be different from any other time. You know what, friends? In those neutral situations, don't be comfortable. Rejoice in the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. Keep ourselves always focused. Don't be like that monkey who became comfortable because there was a nice, sweet breeze. Hold on to our faith. Hold on to the King of kings and the Lord of lords of our lives. Amen? He provides us with grace for tomorrow. But today, He promised us the provision for today. The Bible tells us in the model prayer, this is not the Lord's prayer, it is the model prayer for disciples. This is our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, today. Give us now, today. Now we can pray for the future. We can save for the future. We can invest for the future. But what God is interested in is on a daily trust. Are you with me? Daily trust. Daily trust. Daily hope. Daily promises. Daily uh, holding on to the Lord. That's what He wants for us. In neutral situations. Look at this, friends. In Romans 8, verse 20, uh, 28. And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love Him. 
Amen? For those who have been called according to his purpose. He works for the good. Look at this other passage. Same chapter, Romans chapter 8. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The present suffering? Your present suffering? Now, remember, none of us has been through what Apostle Paul has been, been through. He got beaten, slashed many times, went through shipwrecks, snake bites, he can quote and mention all the different things he went through. And he says, I consider that our present, he includes us, our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The glory that will be revealed in a fallen Chris. The glory that will be revealed in a fallen Ara. The glory that God has revealed in you and in me. Those cannot be compared to what this world has done. Amen. For the creation awaits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Oh boy. <laughs> the creation <laughs> waits in eager expectation. Meaning to say there is this, this groaning in creation that is waiting for the return of Christ. And when Jesus comes back again, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that is what we are waiting for. That is when this, this finality of this glory that will be in us. So friends, when that time comes, hallelujah, if you are in Christ, what can all these things do to you? What can cancer do to you? What can COVID do to you? When we get there, there is no more sickness or disease. There is no more simvastatin. There is no more allopurinol. No more diabetes. No more of all of these problems. What is over there is the perfection of glory. That glorified body that was in Christ as a first fruit. Redeemed the rest that is to come. Woo! Hallelujah. He was the first fruit. It sanctifies the rest. If you are in Christ, you have trusted in Jesus Christ because he was, those, he was the first fruit. With a glorified body, you will have one too. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. You know, friends, these problems in this world shall come to pass. The Bible repeats it over and over again. And in closing, the Bible tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Where do you fix your eyes? Where do we fix our eyes? On Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. Whew. Where do we fix our eyes? We fix our eyes on Jesus. Not on people. Not on circumstances. Not on the problems of this world. Not on political figures. Not on geo-economic political problems that are going on. Not the wars and rumors of wars. We fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen? We fix our eyes on the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When we go through problems, we can rejoice when our eyes are fixed in Him. Can you rejoice, friends, today? Can we be thankful to the Lord and have a heart of rejoicing? Apostle Paul modeled this for us, and he said, Follow me as I follow Christ. The model is Christ. And Paul does it. And we are to go in line with the foundations that were built on the apostles. And say, Lord, I'm going to believe and trust in your word. I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. I'm going to trust in you in this new year. I'm going to rejoice in every circumstance. I'm going to believe, oh God, that the best that you have is still to come. Why? Because if, if it is not 2021, remember the glory that is yet to be revealed is still to come. Are you excited, church? 
I am excited. And I want you to be excited too. Because God is faithful. He is faithful. Let's all stand. Lord, we trust in you. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, that if we look to the left or look to the right, we will sink in the waves. But we fix our eyes firmly on you as we walk on this, on this earth. We ask that you will help us, guide us through the process. Lord, this new year will be a year of restoration. This new year will be a year of rejoicing. This new year will be a year wherein we can come and, and honor you and bless you together as a church. Lord, we pray that the circumstances of this world, we pray for this global pandemic to end in the name of Jesus. We pray for the sufferings, oh, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you, oh Lord, will bring restoration and recovery, oh God, over every single one. And I pray right now for a grieving nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our president. We pray for those who are in authority. We ask, Lord, that you will bless them as they bless us as a country. We ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us. Lord, we pray for our church. And, Lord, we also thank you that you gave yourself for us. We fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We ask, Lord, that you will work in us, strengthen us, be with us, guide us, Lord. We thank you for your presence. And Lord, we are careful, oh God, to give back to you all the praise and all the glory. It all belongs to you, oh God. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, this morning, as we as a community here and to those watching online, we pray that you, oh Lord, will be honored in our partaking Lord, of the elements, symbols of your body and your blood, I pray, O oh God, that you, O oh Lord, will be celebrated in this feast as we partake together. Amen. Uh, for those of you who are watching online who have not yet uh, prepared, you can start doing so. And for those who are actually here today, uh, Pastor Tata is passing the uh, communion plate. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Lord, we prepare ourselves and Lord, we ask that you examine our hearts and we ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us and purify us, oh God, as we partake of the symbols of your body and your blood that was shed in Calvary. I pray that you will be blessed in this and that we will be able, Lord, to remember your suffering on the cross. We thank you. And Lord, we ask that you will bless this in Jesus' name. The Bible says, I pass on to you what I received from the Lord. On the night that the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us all eat the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. Let us all drink together. The Bible says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you declare his death until he comes. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for you coming. We thank you, Lord, for you giving yourself for us. We thank you, Lord, that you took our place. We thank you, Lord, that you died in the cross. And Lord, we celebrate you, our great and mighty God. We thank you for the blessing of hope and future. We thank you, Lord, that we are victors because of your finished work in the cross of Calvary. Lord, we ask for this entire week as we go forth. We pray for this entire month, Lord of January. We also pray, Lord, for this entire year. For this first Sunday, we call it and we declare it our first fruit to you. Whether it is finances, whether it's our heart, whether it's us coming here, whether whatever it is, God, I pray that you will bless each and every one of us with our first fruit from our hearts. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.